Hello and welcome to a video tutorial on how to work around the issues outlined in VMware KB87375, or how to correct the sync between the CSI pod secret and workload storage management user on vCenter. My name is Alex, and I'm a support engineer for the VMware Tanzu team. To get started, I'll show you what to look for in your supervisor cluster if you think you're experiencing this issue, as well as how to check the logging of the appropriate pods. What you'll need is a two SSH connections to vCenter, but we'll start with just one. Make sure you're logged in as root to the vCenter and go ahead and enter the following command. This decrypts the password to the supervisor cluster. We're gonna go ahead and SSH to the IP that's given to us here. And provide the password that it's given us here. This can be copy and paste as plain text. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to query all the pods in the VMware system CSI namespace. We'll notice here that they're in crash loop back off status. I'll show you how to check the logs. In order to check the logs, we're going to need to pick one of the pods to look at. I prepared a command here that will show us how to do that. First, we're going to get the logs from the VMware system CSI namespace. We're going to point it at one of our pods here. In this case, I've chosen the one with five out of six. And we're going to look at the vSphere syncer pod. As you can see here, there's an error logged about an incorrect username or password. We can mirror this over here on the KB article, looking at the vSphere syncer.log. This issue can be caused by several different factors. We most commonly see it in the form where you're not able to provision persistent volume claims on your supervisor cluster, or the supervisor cluster can appear in a not healthy state. This is caused by the password for the workload storage management user on vCenter not being in sync with the password that's contained in the vSphere CSI secret on the supervisor cluster. We'll go ahead and check through both of those now. To check the password contained in the secret on the supervisor cluster, simply scroll down to the workaround section and copy this command right here. We'll then take this command and enter it over here on our supervisor cluster to get the password. As you can see here, the password located on the supervisor cluster. Return back to the KB article and go ahead and copy this command. We'll run this command on our other SSH session connected just to the vCenter. The password is contained right above this integer and below the string containing the username for the workload storage management user. We can see here that the passwords are not in sync, meaning we'll have to reset them. If in your case the passwords do match, you can go ahead and use the username that we found on the file in vCenter as well as the password and try and log into the vSphere client using that username and password provided. If you're able to do that, you can simply just delete the VMware system CSI pods and they should come back into a running state. Since we're not in that situation, we're gonna to have to go through with the reset process. We first need to restart the service for WCP on vCenter, but before that, we need to make an edit to the file that we are looking at. This integer right here contains the number of milliseconds that are needed before this password will be reset the next time the service is restarted. We can go ahead and manually edit this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this enter edit mode, change this to a zero, so the next time the service will restart, this password will change. I'll save my work by typing escape, colon, wq, and bang. We'll then type the command to restart the service. Now that the service has been successfully restarted, you can see that we have a new password generated here. It's important to note that there are several legal characters that are not allowed in this. So we may have to do this several times. I'm going to repeat this process until I get a password that's acceptable based on these guidelines. So now we have a password that's acceptable. As you can see from the command line history, sometimes this can take several attempts since the password attempt is generated randomly. Once we have our password, we can go ahead and move over back to the supervisor cluster so we can back up the current secret just in case. I'll copy this command here, return to the supervisor cluster, and go ahead and back it up to root vSphere config secret underscore original dot BAK. Now, 
we can take the secret that we captured and we'll bring this into a notepad. Let's return to vCenter, capture the new password that we generated, go back to the notepad and replace the password within double quotes with the new password that we generated. We now need to encode this in base64 without any line breaks. We can go ahead and take the couple pieces of text here and append them to our notepad. Now go ahead and copy the whole thing. You can paste this in either your supervisor cluster or your vCenter. When you go ahead and run it, you should be given a hash in base64. Go ahead and copy it to your clipboard and verify that there are no line breaks in this by pasting it into a notepad. Since I have word wrap turned off, I can see that there are no line breaks. This is a good hash to use. We now need to go inject this hash and edit the secret in the vSphere config secret. So let's go ahead and take this command and we'll run this on the supervisor cluster. This is the secret that we need to replace. Using the arrow keys, we can navigate down here and delete the word using DW. Now I'll enter insert mode. Return to the top here, leaving a single white space. And go ahead and copy the hash that we generated. Make sure we have the full thing. Go ahead and copy it to the clipboard. Paste it in here. It should look like this. And then we can escape, colon, WQ, and bang. Once the secret's been edited, we can go ahead and delete all the pods in the VMware system CSI namespace. Once the pods are deleted, we should be able to check, and the new ones should be in running status.